Time now for an in-depth look at the market news, and for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ehua Women's University. Professor Kim, good afternoon. Thank you for coming on today. Good afternoon, Devin. Well, let's start with the news that South Korea has risen to become the 10th largest economy in the world. It's knocked Brazil out of the top 10 with the shakeup in the past year caused by the pandemic. How did this come about, Professor, and what does it mean? Uh, before the coronavirus pandemic, uh, the size of Korean economy is about the 12th largest economy in the whole world, uh, which means Korean GDP was slightly larger than Spain, but slightly smaller than uh, Brazil with, uh, with 210 million population. Uh, over the uh, coronavirus pandemic last year, Korean economy shrank by 1%. Uh, which is one of the best economic growth except China. But uh, Brazilian economy shrank by 4%, which is uh, unfortunately one of the worst growth in, in South American countries. So it means that Korean economy's GDP at 1.6 trillion US dollars uh, became slightly larger than uh, Brazilian economy after pandemic. Well, this ranking from the IMF also projects out five years until 2026, uh, estimating a GDP of around, as you said, uh, in the $1.6, $1.8 trillion, but that's going to go up, which should keep Korea in the top 10 until then. What do you make of, that, of these uh, projections, Professor? IMF's uh, Korean economy, economic forecast, economic growth forecast for this year is about 3.6%, uh, uh, actually, which is higher than that of Bank of Korea's uh, OECDs cities and Korean government. So if this momentum of economic growth with over 3% economic growth rate uh, continues uh, several years, the size of Korean economy will continue to be larger than uh, Brazil, Italy, and Spain. But this scenario totally depends on the path of uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, for example, if there is another uh, serious wave of COVID pandemic or uh, the speed of vaccination is not fast enough to limit the spread of pandemic. Uh, uh, the size of rel relative size of the Korean economy can be sh uh, lower than that of the uh, Brazilian economy in the next five years. Yeah, a lot of uncertainty when it comes to that over the coming years. Uh, let's turn to the markets now. On Wall Street overnight, stocks were up for the first time in three sessions by about 1% across the board. Tell us what's happening in the global markets. Even with uh, U.S. corporations' better than expected performance in the first quarter of this year, uh, New York market suffered from uh, three straight days uh, loss before yesterday. But U.S. market successfully rebounded uh, yesterday with uh, Dow Jones Industrial 0.9% return and Nasdaq's 1.2% return. Uh, as you said, Devin, particularly particular stocks, uh, which is positively related to a business cycle, led markets uh, increase, uh, like materials, energy, finance, and auto parts increased over 1% in a single day yesterday. Uh, European markets all increased uh, over 0.4 percent due to U.S. markets rise. Yeah, as you reference uh, a surge in demand in many sectors uh, as the U.S. economy reopens. Uh, now, here in Korea, stocks were down a fair bit yesterday, but today they've bounced back a little. It seems as investors look to get in a little cheaper. What's the story in the Korean markets? U.S. markets rise yesterday gave a positive impact on today's domestic market. Uh, there was uh, uh, one of the largest drops in, the, in a month with negative 1.5% uh, return in, in, in yesterday's market. Uh, but in the, today's market uh, successfully uh, uh, shifted to the positive side uh, with, uh, with uh, Kospi's 0.2% uh, return and, and Kostak's 0.3% uh, return. Kospi market's marginal rise is led by individual investors, but in Kostang market, the rise was uh, led by foreign investors and domestic institutional investors. And let's stay with the Kospi for a minute. Uh, last year, companies listed on the Kospi paid out <coughs> excuse me, their biggest amount in dividends in five years. That's around 33 trillion won or about $30 billion. That's an increase from the year before of about 60%. Tell us about those dividends and what it means for the companies and investors. 
uh, Korea has been known as extremely low payout uh, country. Uh, but it is good to see that it became a new trend to pay out more to shareholders uh, these days. In, in uh, domestic market listed companies, dividend payout reached the highest in five years last year. Uh, this is, of course, affected by their earnings uh, better, better than expected and, and, and their efforts to improve uh, shareholders' value. Uh, combined dividend payout by uh, 529 out of 769 companies on the ma main exchange came to uh, 33.2 trillion won or 30 billion dollars last year. So dividend payments increased by 60% from the previous year. But the average payout ratio, which is another uh, barometer of dividend payout situation, the percentage of earnings uh, paid to shareholders in dividends decreased by 39% from previous year's 41%. Well, that's an interesting uh, fact to note there, Professor. Thank you for sharing that, and uh, we'll have to leave it there for today. We appreciate your insights, as always. Thank you very much.